Hi there, good afternoon. My name is Sean Kennedy. I work for the St. Petersburg Greenhouse, an entrepreneurship center in St. Petersburg, similar to the ECC right down the street here. Uh, what we both have in common is we are hosts of an, a weekly event called One Million Cups. One Million Cups started in Kansas City with the Kauffman Foundation four years ago because of their desire to get to know the startups in their community. So every Wednesday at 9 a.m., we gather a room full of about 100 folks, and they listen to two startups tell us what they're building here in Tampa Bay. Uh, we provide free coffee from Kawa. I know you guys have had some of that already today. It's very delicious and a great incentive to come out. The startups talk about what great things are being built, and then the audience helps them grow by asking questions, making suggestions, and thinking through connections that can help out these entrepreneurs. Uh, one of the startups who's presented at both Million Cups in St. Petersburg and in Tampa is a company called Intrinio. Their founder is Rachel Carpenter, who will be on next to tell you a little bit about their story. Rachel? Thank you, Sean. Thanks for being no, here, no, it's guys. comfortable. I just need to be... Hello. Uh, Interactive Festival, and thanks to One Million Cups and all of the founders who have made this program possible. It's been really useful for us at Intrinio. I don't know where my presentation is. <laughs> Got it? Okay. So my name is Rachel Carpenter. I am co-founder and CEO of Intrinio. We provide the most affordable and accurate financial data on the market. Our data powers everything from websites to applications to spreadsheets, financial models, and even your finance homework. So what do I mean when I say financial data? It's everything from stock prices to financial statements, revenues, expenses, sector and industry data, economic data, you name it. Any kind of data that an investor needs to make a good decision. The problem that we're solving is that this type of data is extremely expensive. If you're an investor and you want access to this data, you're going to pay anywhere from one to $3,000 per person per month. It's extremely expensive and not affordable or accessible to developers or to individual investors. And in Trinio, on average, we charge about $100 a month to access the same data. Our unique model that we've built is meant to disrupt the traditional approach to data and analysis. We provide this data that is disruptively affordable, I'm talking 1 20th the price, without compromising the quality of the data. And it's also extremely flexible. Like I said, 1 20th the price, because we use an automated approach to pull in this data. We've also um, eliminated the seat license, which is really typical in the financial industry. It's just a usage-based model, so you don't pay for data that you're not using at Intrinio. We also charge zero redistribution fees, which is a really good thing for developers um, and different other fintech startups that are building applications, need financial data. Typically, you pay close to a million dollars for the rights to redistribute this data. We don't charge you anything. It's also extremely high quality. Believe it or not, some of these big firms like Bloomberg have really bad quality data. It's like 60 million data points. They have about a 1% to 2% error rate, but because of our processes, our error rate is only 0.3%, which means investors are getting very accurate data. We are also the only financial data provider to provide open access to an API, which is pretty unprecedented in this industry. Our API is used by developers, other fintech startups, bloggers, anybody who's building a website or some type of application that needs financial data in the background to power it. So think of Yahoo Finance. There's an API in the background that's powering all of that data. That's what we do. For our non-developer, non-technical users who don't know what an API is, we've also built this data into Microsoft Excel. So analysts and professional investors and individual investors can get the data directly and flexibly into Excel, and it's live, continuously updated. We're also the only financial data provider on Google Sheets, which means we're cloud-based, cross-platform, any device, any operating system, anywhere, anytime. Leveraging this data, which is a great asset for us, we're also building an analytics platform on top of that. And we started with valuations. We've built a valuation engine onto the web that enables you to determine the intrinsic value of any publicly traded company. Next, we're going to move into private company valuation as well. So this analytics platform is leveraging all of our data that we sell. We are crowdsourcing some pretty exciting data from this platform as well. So we require you to put in your assumptions into the model in our analytics platform, which means we're crowdsourcing what does the crowd think is going to happen to stocks, which is really, really valuable data. This market size is about $12 billion, but there's a lot of people that were priced out of this market. As an individual investor, you can't afford $3,000 for data, so we're planning on expanding upon this $12 billion market. 
Globally, it's about 25 billion. Next, we're going to be tackling European markets and Asian markets. You can see our targets up here on the left. Um, we're targeting them through direct sales and mass marketing. We also have some really exciting partnerships that just came on the table. We've partnered with Microsoft. Sorry. We've partnered with Microsoft and NASDAQ in the past month. So we have some pretty exciting projects coming up. That's it. And I'll take all your questions, if you have any, um, on the Intrinio Twitter page. So you can tweet at us at Intrinio, and you can contact me on that on our website as well. Thank you very much. I thought I was not going to get any love. Thank you. <laughs> so good afternoon. My name is Tony Salvaggi, and I'm the founder of eSmart Recycling. And we recycle computers and electronics mainly from corporations in order to fund tech labs in schools in developing countries for kids that don't have access to technology and partner up with local tech initiatives and local nonprofits. So we're a social enterprise uh, company, and that's why it was so important for us to combine uh, the nonprofit mindset of giving and focusing on solving that social problem, but at the same time, the for-profit aspect of how can we turn this into a revenue model that we can scale and evolve and impact the lives of people, not only in our community, but across the world. Uh, our primary mission became we want to empower kids all over the world through technology. It's coming in the next years, accessibility through uh, Wi Fi and wireless uh, you know, availability. So the next problem becomes how can we make this hardware not only available, but uh, accessible and affordable to these, uh, to these kids. So we are firm believers that not only all kids deserve to cast their own digital footprint, but we need to create that bridge so, they, so we can help them even out and uh, level that, that playing field. Uh, a little bit about my background, I've been in the recycling industry for over seven years, uh, especially focused on the scrap metal side, and I've also written about self-sustainable and community-driven entrepreneurship business models. When it comes to the problem, the problem that we're solving is two-phased, because on one hand we have e-waste, which is the fastest growing uh, waste stream in not only in our country but in the world. Almost 200,000 computers are being thrown away in the landfill every single day in the U.S. And almost 500,000 mobile devices are being thrown away in the landfill every single day in the U.S. So in that aspect, we have, we have the, uh, the environmental issue. But also, technology advances so fast that it's very hard to keep up. So if it's hard to keep up from, from our end, imagine big companies and corporations. It turns into a huge waste of time, money, and very, very valuable physical space. So we solve those problems with our five-step five step action plan that ultimately consists in uh, the collection, taking care of all the uh, heavy lifting and all the uh, uh, labor involved in getting this equipment out, then inventorying every single piece of equipment that we get with serial numbers, asset tags, so we can provide a breakdown to our clients. Hard drive shredding, we're one of the few companies that will actually destroy and shred hard drives in-house. We don't remarket or resell any hard drives. Then reporting back and telling our clients what's the upstream uh, supply chain and what's a downstream supply chain? What have we been doing with that equipment and how is that equipment making an impact? And lastly, giving back. And this is where we either purchase the equipment from our clients or utilize that to fund these tech labs on behalf of our clients. A lot of companies don't have a proper plan in place, but if they do have a plan in place, they're most likely missing the, mar missing, uh, missing the mark and capitalizing on that opportunity to give back in a very powerful way. So that's our biggest competitive advantage. From the beginning, we started with a tech mining drive and trying to turn that blue collar approach to the industry and create not only a competitive advantage, but provide a solution that is scalable in our communities and communities all over the world. So I want you to think about this. Next time you're getting ready to throw away a laptop or a computer, you don't know what to do with that. Keep in mind that the biggest library in the entire universe can be put in a single thumb drive. And that knowledge can be a powerful impact for that kid that probably hasn't even seen a computer for the first time in their life. 
name is Tony, and I'm a firm believer that collaboration is the engine of growth in today's economy. So let's work together for the benefit of our community and humanity. Thank you.